at this time I'm going to introduce to us um, Kellen Reddy uh, and she's going to speak on the topic of study methods or study skills uh, and so this is a brief profile uh, she's currently in a final med she's a final year medical student at the University of Pretoria she was born and bred in Peter Maritzburg where she attended primary school and high school in 2014 she was awarded with a scholarship to study for a year at a high school in the US where she completed her senior year. Uh, when she's not working at the hospital or in front of a textbook, Kellen enjoys reading for leisure, singing and spending time with family and friends. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Kellen Baby. So firstly, um, thank you so much to Pastor Chris and Pastor Mangesi for giving me this opportunity to speak to you guys. Um, and yeah, hello students. It's an absolute, absolute privilege and delight for me to stand before you today and hopefully share something valuable <laughs> um, with you. Um, regarding study skills and study techniques. Okay. So why am I qualified to hopefully teach you on this topic? Um, at, the, at this very moment, I have spent many years in the educational system. And I want you guys to maybe shout out a guess uh, for like how many years I've spent in the educational system. I hope you don't guess higher because then I probably look super old. Um, but yeah, anyone want to just shout out a guess for how many years? So just me in the educational system, okay? 17. 17. Anyone else? 15. Yeah, that 21, that means I'm old, I'm looking old today. So, guys, I've spent 20 years in the educational system, right? So, well done to those who said 20. Um, I spent two years in preschool because my parents thought I needed to really fine-tune my coloring skills. Um, and then I spent 13 years in primary school and high school, and no, I did not fail a year. They did not bring someone who failed year to talk to you today. I spent a year um, overseas, like Pastor Mongezi has already mentioned, and then I've currently completed five years of my tertiary education, so five years of my medical degree, and I'm in, I'm in my final year currently, so the studying continues for me. And in these 20 years that have taken place, where I've been in the educational system, um, I've tried many different studying techniques. Many, many, many different studying techniques. Um, so hopefully, with my experience, I can teach you guys what may work, what to avoid, what's gonna waste your time. Um, and to be honest, I'm still trying to fine tune uh, my study techniques even now, even 20 years later. Um, so. By, I have by no means arrived as the perfect student, um, but hopefully through my very extensive educational history, I can uh, share with you guys what may help. And also, I'm a massive nerd, right? Um, so I hope none of you have pictures in the high school library <laughs> because mm -mm, that's cringy. And it didn't even stop there because when I went to university, I did nerdy things as well. That's me at the front of like this committee at university. So yeah, hella, hella nerdy. Um, but hopefully you guys can gain something from me being a complete nerd. So I don't know if any of you have ever received a talk about how to study, but I'm sure most of you um, were never taught how to actually learn, how to actually study, and it's understandable. So just to refer to what um, Dr. Rufus was speaking about, um, and especially with COVID, I mean, even before COVID, um, it was always a challenge to cover curriculum, you know? Your teachers were probably always rushing at the end of the term or, 
if you're a university student, you know you're rushing at the end of the semester to cover all of your curriculum, all of the content you need to learn. Um, but now COVID has exacerbated that. So COVID has made that far worse. So, you know, there's condensing of curriculum and even still it's a struggle to cover everything, right? So it's understandable that no one has really taken the time to teach you how to study, but that doesn't mean you just mustn't learn how to study. That means that the responsibility now falls on you, okay? So as much as it is going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, it's not always gonna be pleasant, it's not always gonna be pretty, it's definitely worth the investment. Because imagine the time that you're going to waste using possibly ineffective studying techniques, um, whereas you can just invest the time first to learn how to study, and then it'll help all of your future studying, all of your future learning. Um, not just limited to high school, but if you move on to tertiary education, if you even move on to like lecturing people, I know that's like way far, you're probably just wor worried about your test now, but yeah, it will, it will be something that you, will help you for the rest of your life. So it's definitely worth the investment. Okay, so you will notice that there are little pieces of paper in front of you, right? So we're going to use that paper soon. But first, I just want to see a quick show of hands. How many of you have utilized one of these study techniques? So making notes or summaries, highlighting or underlining, rereading your content, or like feel or move. I don't know how many of you have watched Hannah Montana, but she has this bone dance where she like made a whole song about like the bones of the body. So that's what I mean by like feeling or moving through your studying. So yeah, show of hands, you've used one of these study techniques. Okay, so pretty much everyone here. Now with the pieces of paper, you'll see there's purple, blue, <laughs> green, and red, but yeah, I only have pink paper, right? Um, so I want you to just hold up which one you have used or maybe like to use. Um, if it's a few, you can hold up a few, but yeah, I just wanna see it, right? So we can see like, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of purple, so notes and summaries. Um, okay, seeing some highlighting, underlying, underlining, and seeing some rereading, not seeing too many pinks, but I half expected that. Um, okay, cool, thanks guys. But yeah. Well, this is awkward because <laughs> all of these techniques that I have up here have been proven um, to be ineffective studying techniques, right? But it's uh, techniques that most of us have maybe like practice ourselves. I remember my mom when I was in grade four and we started having exams, she was telling me like to make notes and summaries and you know like these are the techniques that we are generally taught but people who are super, super smart, way nerdier than me, have done actual studies to prove that these are ineffective, right? So what's the issue? Um, so we have passive study techniques and we have active study techniques. This table is to just, yeah, have something on the slide. You don't really need to read it, but yeah. We have passive study techniques and we have active study techniques, right? So most of us have utilized passive study techniques. Um, and the problem with passive study techniques is that firstly, it gives you a, a false sense of productivity. So you're making these beautiful like Instagram worthy notes, you know, like you're thinking, ah, oh, I know my work, I'm so great, like, ooh, the highlighters are coming out. It gives you a false sense of productivity and efficiency, right? And it also takes a lot of time. Like, if I've seen people here with the highlighters and the colored pens, and it takes time to make those Pinteresty notes, right? Um, so it's high input for very low output. Right? So essentially, you're wasting your time. But active studying techniques, on the other hand, are more difficult because these techniques are trying to force you to retrieve the information from your brain instead of putting it in. And I know it sounds like a bit 
upside down, it sounds like a bit of a paradox, right? Because if I need to learn something, I need to put it in, not try and take it out. Um, but studies have shown that that is, though, like the techniques that fall under active uh, ways to study are far more effective, okay? And when it comes to your brain, your brain is actually a pretty selfish organ, okay? So it likes to take the path of least resistance. It likes to do the thing that's easy and that will give you high reward. Um, even like in like physiology and anatomy, your brain uses a ton of your blood supply. It's actually quite small in relation to everything else, but it sucks up like so much of your blood, right? So your brain is gonna always find a way to like take the path of least resistance. Um, so we have to actively try and combat that, okay? Right, so what are these evidence-based study techniques or what is this whole like, you know, active way of studying? Um, so we have two things, okay? We have active recall and we have spaced repetition. And these two things have been found to really, really, um, like in studies, they've been found to be really effective, okay? So when it comes to active recall, I want to tell you about one of the studies that were done. So there were two groups of students, and both groups needed to learn a certain, con uh, uh, um, a certain bit of information, and then they needed to write a test. But one group had to learn that information by rereading it, um, so just rereading it multiple times, and then the other group read it, understood it, and then tested themselves once before they went for that formal test, right? So the results of the study was that the group that just tested themselves once after reading the content did four times better than the group that just reread their content. And I can tell you now, it would have taken so much longer for that group to just reread their content as opposed to the group who just tried to test themselves once. So active recall um, employs techniques of retrieving information from your brain because that's how your memory forms, that's how memory works, okay? So think about it like this. You hear a song on the radio and you like really feeling the song, okay? And then you go home and you look it up on your phone and you listen to it a few more times. And then the next morning in the shower, you're trying to sing it. So you're trying to get that song, you're trying to remember the song. And then it's through the act of singing that your brain learns how to remember it. So it's through the act of your brain trying to take the information out of your brain that helps your brain actually remember and store information. Um, so how do we do this whole active recall thing? It's one thing me telling you how, like, that there is this thing called active recall, but how do we do it? So there's some examples, right? So flashcards. Yeah, if you don't believe that I'm a major nerd, now you're gonna see I'm a major nerd. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've, I made these flashcards in like the second year of my university, right? And it's for anatomy. Anatomy has a lot of stuff to remember. So how I would use a flashcard like this, or maybe this side, it's a little bit prettier. Um, so there's a lot of info here, right? And I would first make sure that I can like read it, understand it, and then I'll test myself on it. So ideally you should make flashcards with like one, word here or one phrase or whatever, and then your information on the back. And then you look at the word or phrase, and then you try and recall what's on the back. So don't just, okay, this is the sinuses, and then look at it and read it, because that's passive. You need to actively test yourself, okay? Then practice questions. So while you're reading something, while you're studying something, just on a spare piece of paper, write some practice questions, and then go take a five minute break, or take a walk outside, and then come back and see how many of those practice questions you can answer, because that's the, act, the, the action of trying to retrieve the information from your brain. And then closed book recall, or spider diagrams. Um, so learn, so if you had to learn this page, right? Um, Learn it, understand it, and then turn it over. And try and actively recall it, so say it out loud, say what you remember. Or if you someone who likes the colored pens and the highlighters, write it out, 
you know? Uh, so practice ways to get the information out of your brain. And then also just testing yourself. So you can test yourself verbally. So you can, you know, read something or study a chapter of a, of a book and then, you know, maybe the next day you can try and see if you can remember all of the things that you read or tried to learn yesterday. You can also find like past papers or those kinds of things to practice. And then we have something else called space repetition. So everyone has something called the forgetting curve. So if I had to teach you about a certain topic today, give me a topic example, something you're learning at school. Algebra, right? So if I had to teach you a section in algebra today, um, and then I had to ask you about it tomorrow, you'd probably do well in telling me about it. But then if I had to ask you about it in a week, maybe you'd remember some things, but not everything. And then if I had to ask you about it in six months, you probably won't be able to tell me anything about what I said about algebra today, right? So we need to combat this forgetting curve because when you learn, you must learn to remember. You mustn't just learn for the test, you know? This whole thing of cramming, it's a waste of time, you know? You, you're essentially wasting your time because you're not learning for long term. You're going to have to come back to the, that information and learn it again. So you need to plan time to revise. Right? So you need to cover your work early, and you can use the time management principles that Ryland has um, taught you very well. And you need to plan time to revise, but you need to revise actively. So revision doesn't mean taking your Pinterest notes and reading them. <laughs> you need to actively revise. So try and recall that information for you, from your brain, because that's how you're going to combat the forgetting curve. Okay, so how do we apply these principles, right? Um, so I'm gonna take you through how I myself would apply this, and then hopefully you guys can adapt it to what you need to learn, whether you're in school or university. Um, so firstly, it's important to understand. So I'm not saying passive techniques are all doom and gloom. I'm just saying that that mustn't be the only way that you learn or study, okay? so. If you need to learn about a certain topic, make sure you understand everything first. So if you need to utilize passive studying techniques to do that, then do it. If you need to make notes and summaries to make sure you really understand this thing, then go for it, you know? Um, so yeah, not to say that I haven't utilized passive studying techniques, because yeah, these are notes. I'm also one for very Pinteresty notes. Um, yeah, these are notes I've made in university, very beautiful, very proud of them. <laughs> um, but the problem was that I just made the notes. I didn't use the active study methods after making the notes. So if you really wanna make notes, make it. But make sure that you are actively trying to recall whatever notes you are making and the notes, the aim of the notes should be to understand your work. Not, that mustn't be the A all and B all of your studying, okay? Um, then, you need to distinguish which things need understanding and practice and then which things just need memory. Like these things here, it's anatomical structures in your body. I need to just remember it, you know? If a doctor puts a diagram in front of me of the stomach, I need to be able to label it. So some things just need to, um, you just need to utilize your memory and you need to practice memorizing it, okay? But my point still stands, my first point still stands. You have to understand first. Do whatever you can to make sure that you understand the content first, okay? Um, and then you get different kinds of content. content. Uh, so you get volume-based content and you get practice-based content. So volume-based content, for example, is a textbook like this, and I need to learn this textbook very soon, okay? So volume. Um, for me, when it comes to volume-based content, I will read something so I can read a chapter of the book, make sure I understand it, and then I'll close the book and try and recall a certain condition that I maybe learned about, okay? And then because I'm in um, tertiary education, I can go a step further and apply that to the patients that I see. Um, whereas in high school, there's not really so much of opportunity for you to apply volume-based content. Then you get practice-based content. But 
with practice-based content, it doesn't mean that there's no theory. Like I know in maths and physics and you know your sciences, there is a lot of theory that you need to remember, okay? Like trigonometry alone, you can, there's textbooks about just like trig theory, you know? Um, so you need to make sure you understand those principles first before you just wanna go practice questions, okay? So make sure that you understand the principles first, but that's heavily practice-based, so you need to focus a lot of your time on practicing, but don't neglect the understanding. That must be the underlying um, principle for all of your learning, okay? Some things are slap bang in the middle. I did art in high school. It was heavily practical based where I needed to be technically proficient in art, but it, it also had a very heavy theory component. So you may just need to split your time in the middle when it comes to certain things. Um, but my point here is that you need to be adaptable, so you need to know whether you are you, whether you are doing volume-based content or practice-based content, but remember, you can have application in volume-based content, like me applying my textbook to the patients I see, but you also have theory and practice-based content. You need to know your maths and science principles before you try and practice it. Um, but ultimately, you need to be adaptable, and you also need to make sure that you're not wasting your time. Okay, you need to be very honest with yourself, and you just need to not waste your time. Okay, something that's very important and also very close to my heart is equipping yourself. So let's say, for example, um, there's someone at Home Affairs, and they have a line of 100 people that they need to help, and they need to, like, you know, get through their job, which is helping all of these people, but now system is offline. How are they gonna help those people, right? So in the same way, you guys need to make sure that you take care of yourselves first, right? So the essential things are essential for a reason. You need to sleep enough. That is, like, there's no glamour in pulling the all-nighter, in drinking the energy drinks, in being so sleep-deprived and so miserable because you were studying. There's no merit in that. It's not worth it. Trust me, I speak from experience. <laughs> um, so take care of yourself. Make sure you're sleeping well, you're eating enough. Um, you have hobbies, you have a life outside of your academics. You um, take breaks, you socialize, you see other people. Those are very important. Then, um, you know, Rylan touched on preparing your environment and also preparing your content. So I think he did it very well when it came to preparing your environment. I know for myself, I get very stressed if my environment is cluttered. I think if Rylan had to see some of the times where like I was so stressed and you know, my room was just in a state, I think he'd just like, mm -mm. he'd just fall down. It was so bad, right? So it's important to have a clean and clutter-free environment because that has an effect on how productive you are and how you work. Also, you need to prepare your content because how are you gonna study if you don't know what you need to study, if you don't know, um, you know, the objectives and um, like if you don't have a plan, if you don't have your deadlines, those are important. Don't get fixated and don't think, oh, you are studying by prepping those things. Um, but it's important. You, you need to know what you need to study before you actually start studying. So, like Ryland said, Plan, 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 and plan some more. And then also know yourself, okay? And if you don't, so if you're not sure like what studying techniques work for you right now, if you need to try things, um, take time to do that. Take time to figure out whether you prefer to work for an hour and then take a half an hour break or whether you prefer to work for 25 minutes and take a five minute break. Things like that take time. So you know they say good things take time. And that saying rings true for everything in life. Um, but with that, so with taking the time to know yourself and know how you study and um, know what works for you and what doesn't work for you, be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself. Being selfless doesn't mean neglecting yourself, okay? Um, and I think that's a misconception that a lot of people um, might have. Because self-care is important. It shouldn't be everything in your life, but you need to see to your needs. You need to be patient and kind and merciful to yourself, okay? Um, and failure is not gonna be foreign. I'm not standing here before you because I haven't failed in my life. Anyone want to guess the percentage of the lowest, like the lowest percentage I've ever gotten? 
Just shout out something. Zero. Who said zero? <laughs> Rylan. <laughs> okay, anyone want to take a quick guess? I won't be offended. 23%, guys. 23%. And I've ma like I've made it, you know, like I'm making it slowly and suffering, but I'm making it through my final year of medical school. Um, so failure is not going to be foreign to you. It shouldn't be foreign to you, okay? It's through failure that we can also learn and we can also grow and also improve. Um, so don't set unrealistic expectations of yourself. And then there's always a bigger picture. Okay, so this has been touched on extensively um, with the other speakers, but remember that your intellectual side and your academics and those responsibilities are just one quadrant of the Luke 252 model. Um, we still have another three quadrants that we have to pay attention to. So don't, ne don't neglect the other three at the expense of your academics. And remember, you aren't doing this for your own glorification for, you know, uh, your own sense of achievement and well-being. You're not doing this because you want to be able to say at the end of the day, oh, I'm so great, I came first in my class, I, came, I was on the dean's list at university. Um, because remember, we're called to be representatives first. So first things come first. We are called to be representatives first. But with us call, being called to be representatives first, that means that we must do things as if we're doing it unto God because that's who we're representing, okay? So it's not the, your academics and your um, intellectual quadrant is not the A all and end all of your life, but don't be lackadaisical about it. Don't just be like nonchalant, ugh, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna know, I'm not gonna need to know this in life. You must be diligent with everything, with every opportunity you've been given in your life, you've been blessed with in your life, because we are doing things unto God, we are doing things as his representatives, okay? Oh, sorry. So yeah, quick re recap, guys. So the responsibility falls on us to learn effectively. Um, stay away from passive studying techniques or just use them to make sure that you understand the work, but spend most of your time trying to learn actively and then with evidence-based studying, remember you, you, you learn to understand, um, you learn to remember, and you also learn to teach. So they say that um, you, you know that you know something if you're able to teach a five-year-old about it or someone who is much younger than you. So be on honest with yourself. Make sure that whatever you learn, you can actually teach to someone else who has no clue about whatever you've learned. And then always be ready to adapt. So make sure that you're not just stuck in one kind of technique. And then, yeah, preparation. Give yourself a running start. Prep your environment, prep your content. Make sure you're sleeping and eating enough. The, the basics are the basics for a reason. And it's not the A-all and end-all. And you should always be putting first things first, which is making sure that you are a good representation first before worrying about your academics. So, unfortunately, I talk a lot, so we don't have time right now for some questions, but please do make a note of any questions you may have, and I think there will be a segment later where I can address some of those questions, and even if you're feeling a little bit shy, uh, you're more than welcome to come to me after or get my number from uh, your friend, if you came with a friend um, who attends GMS or, you know, come and ask me for my number. I'm more than happy to speak to you guys and interact with you um, and hopefully help you. So, yeah, thank you all so much. Can we put our hands for Kellen once again? Thank you. I'm beginning to think that we don't have enough time to, you know, do a comprehensive job. I think everyone who's speaking here, they're cutting, cutting, cutting. Um, I hope we have another time where we can come together and spend an entire weekend in <laughs> addressing some of these things.